G'day everybody, Nick Dinger here again for video 16 in the Super Mario Bros. series for Construct 2. We are getting up to the HUD and the points. Okay, well points, coins, and time, I should say. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the text displayed up on the screen following Mario and changing over time, collecting coins and collecting points. Alright, next video we're going to attack the actual points, okay, where you kill an enemy, you earn some points, you collect a coin, you earn some points. What we're going to do is first of all set up things ready to go. I've moved Mario to the left hand side of the screen. I need to know exactly how big the camera is and that, I can see that from the dotted line on the side there. Okay, So that's the first key point. Second thing is we need to make sure the HUD layer is active and you have it selected. Okay. Third thing you need to make sure of is your parallax value for HUD is 0, 0. By default it's 100, 100. Okay. But we need zero, 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 uh, zero, 0 on the HUD, otherwise this won't work properly. And the last thing, okay, I know I said three things, it's actually four things. There is a zip file for you to download in the description of the video. So if you go down, download it, okay, you're going to extract that folder into your graphics folder. And we are ready to go. And before we start, I want to explain exactly what this parallax value does. Let's demonstrate with this Mr. Block. Okay, he's on the blocks layer. Blocks layer has 100, 100 parallax. So when I play the game, you'll notice he moves. When I move along the screen, he moves just as much as Mario moves. If it was 50% or 50-50, he would move half as fast as Mario. Okay, and that's how developers use backgrounds that move at different speeds. Okay, really, really cool effects that you can create doing that. Now, if I put this block on the HUD layer, which has no parallax, you notice the block doesn't move at all very much like a HUD or a heads up display okay now what I'm going to do is move him out of the way change him back to blocks layer and we're going to get started so we're going to create a new folder so right click on your object types add a subfolder HUD is going to be his name we're going to add a brand new object we're going to insert new object it's going to be a sprite font and I'm going to call him text now he is very similar to a text object if you've ever used text object, it allows you to display words and numbers and sentences, whatever you want on the screen. Sprint font allows us to do that as well. However, we can set a custom font. And the custom font is you, you use an image, okay, which has all your characters and symbols inside of it. And it's also each character is given a set width and a set height. All right. The set width and height for the default sprite font is 16 by 16, and that's good because that's the same size we're using. And then you'll see we have to set up a character set which matches the image that's inside your sprite font because not every sprite font has the same characters in the same positions, okay? And in fact, we're not going to have the same as the default one either. Okay, the next property I'm going to quickly look at, let's close this, is the text. It allows you to display different things, okay? As you can see, the scale is how big it is, down to make it smaller, up to make it bigger. And then the horizontal alignment allows you to move it from the left-hand side of the box to the middle of the box, to the right of the box. Okay, and we're going to use those properties a little bit in this video. So the first thing we need to do is edit this font because that font is ugly and it's not even close to what we want. So edit, let's click the open button there, go to your HUD folder, there's the sprite font we're going to use. Now, first of all, you may notice, let me just quickly open it, that it's white with transparent background and it's got a very, very different character set compared to the one that we've got in the video, or the default, I should say. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to help you out with that in a second, but I'm just going to open it, make sure it's there, and you'll see everything's a bit messed up. The character width and height is perfect, but the character set is way out, okay? So, go down to the description of the video, I've copied the character set into the description for you. You're going to have to highlight all of it between the quote marks that I've put in there, and paste it inside this character set box. Now, please make sure there is a space at the front, okay? Whoa, I just put an extra character there, so it screwed everything up. There we go. Okay, if you've got it all right, the word should display correctly. Just make sure you have that space, okay? Sorry to go on about it, but we do need it. Second property we're going to set is scale 0 0.4 is a good scale, I thought. Okay, he's the right size. He looks pretty good. And we're going to place the first one right there at the top, okay? This guy is going to say Mario, because that's what the original does. It says Mario up there. I'm going to copy this guy across, 
and he's going to become our world. And then we're going to copy another one. I'm going to align this guy to the right, and he's going to be time. Okay, so you can see how things are starting to come together already. And then finally, we're going to have one more below the world. I'm going to set his alignment to center. He's going to be one by one. All right, so if we play the game now, we have our text. It follows us, and it's starting to look a lot more like a Mario game. Now, the reason I didn't do the coins, the points, and the time is because we have to do something... Whoop, let me get him back. A little bit different for those guys, unfortunately. Okay, we need to clone this original text object. Okay, and we're going to rename them as we go. We need a couple of them. First one's going to be coins text. Okay, where's my capital? Okay, the next one's going to be points text. And then finally, time text. Now, when we copied these guys, it's good because it kept the font, but what it doesn't do is keep the properties. So we actually need to paste the character set back in the box, set the scale, and then resize the box. Very, very annoying. So the coins text doesn't need to be too big, and the default text is going to be x00, like so. And he's going to be roughly there. That's pretty good. We can move him later if we need to. The next one, points. Same thing. Character set. 0.4 for the scale. And then finally, for the actual text, the points needs to be six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Resize this. Whoa! Put him in place. Okay, getting there. Finally, time text. Paste. 0.4. He is going to be 400 by default. And we're going to set his alignment to right. And move him into place. Okay, the final thing that's missing is the little coins icon that sits next to the X100. Well, X100. X00. And what I did for that is I copied the coin sprite. So I'm going to clone this guy, call him a HUD coin, and move him into the HUD folder. Okay, put him on the screen, resize him down, okay, and try and put him in place. Now that's not going to work, so I'm going to turn snap off. Okay, doke. Now the, the original coin is a little bit different to that guy, but it, all, it behaves the exact same way. It shines, okay? That's the main reason I copied it. Right. And look at that. Starting to get our HUD text coming together really, really nicely. Oh, don't show me bugs. I don't like bugs. All right. So, moving along, we need to add a little bit of code. We need the points to be able to move up. We need the coins to move up. And we need the time to move down. So, I'm going to add a brand new event sheet. I'm going to go add event sheet. I'm going to call it world because I couldn't think of a better name for it. World just seemed appropriate. I'm going to go to my event sheet. One and include world. Now, before I even get started with world, it's one thing I need to change. Coins. It's currently sitting underneath Mario's event sheet. I don't like that in there anymore. I'm going to put it over in the world sheet. So to do it, you're going to right click and cut it. It's going to whinge about losing code. Yes, it will actually delete all the action conditions and stuff like that. But the interesting thing is when we paste, so I'm just going to go whoop, here, all that code comes back. It's a bit weird, okay? It's, ba it's actually a default behavior in Construct. I never knew about it until this video. There you go. We all learned something. Okay, I'm going to add a new global variable. It's going to be called points. Start at zero. One more world time I couldn't just call it time because that's built in and its initial value is 400 all right these guys are going to control what's displayed on the screen and what we take control of okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two groups one's for the HUD text and the other one's for time and we're going to add a little bit of code under it and that'll bring us to the end of the video guys okay it's a fairly short one today add a group HUD text the first thing is we need to set the default values. While we've got the default values here, if we restart the layout or go to the next level, you want it to reset every time you start a layout. So click on this, press S to add a sub event, system, start of layout, system, set value, coins to zero. 
And then we're going to do one for points to zero. And then one for world time to 400. All right. So that's going to set all the default values for you there. The next bit of code that we're going to add here displays it on the screen. So I want to add another sub event to HUD text. Okay. We're going to go to system every tick. And then we're going to go into the actions coin text. Okay. Set the text. And you always want the coins to start with the letter X. So I'm going to put the X inside the quotes. And then I want the numbers to appear after it. Okay. So go N coins. So X and then the coins. Now, the one problem though, you'll notice it cuts our zeros down to one zero. So we're going to fix that right now. There's a lovely little function called zero pat. Okay. Number, it takes two things. The number you want, so coins is the number we want, and the digits. How many digits do you want? We want two digits, don't we? So when we play now, ta-da, two zeros. That's going to be really important for our points. So let's go and add the points right now. Set the text of points to zero pad points six. Okay, so that way we're not going to have one number displayed. You can have six. One last action. Time text. Set his text. Zero pad time or world time. Three. All right. So when we play, everything should be right. Now, hopefully, if I've got a coin box set up here somewhere. Da, they're all mushrooms. Okay, I don't have any coins. Let's just quickly add a coin to the level. Oh, look, a coin. Oh, he's on the HUD layer. He defies me. Look at that. There we go. So already, we can see that the code works. It displays, and when you do it correctly and you're not an idiot like me, things go very well. The next thing is time. Okay, time is a big thing. Let's add a group. Let's go time. We're going to add a sub event to this guy, and we're going to have it so it ticks down every half a second. So every x seconds, 0.5. We're going to subtract one. So system subtract from world time one. Okay, so when we play the game, we should see that tick down. We should see the coin counter tick up. We're doing pretty good. Okay, the final thing is we need, when this timer hits zero, for Mario to fail, for him to die. Okay, and then the level restarts. So that's the next thing that we're going to do right here. Now, unfortunately, our code really doesn't support that at the moment. It only supports Mario getting hit. And if we've got a big Mario and he dies, unfortunately, oh, sorry, you run out of time. Unfortunately, we can only hit him and then we'd have to hit him again. All right. And that would look really, really weird. So what I'm going to do is we're going to change Mario's code slightly. It's not going to be a huge change. Okay. We're going to add a brand new function. So click on Mario functions, click S, go function, on function. Let's go dead. Okay, and all this code goes inside of dead. So drag, bloop. Okay, and you can probably see where I'm going with this. This bit is where he used to die. So I'm just simply going to function call function dead. And that way, we can simply call upon dead when we run out of time. So let's go to world. Okay time. I'm going to add a sub event, or sorry, a second condition to this guy because I just realized we're going to go into the negative if I don't. So I'm going to go to system. We're going to compare the world time is greater than zero. So every half a second, if the world time is greater than zero, subtract one from it. Don't go into the negatives. Otherwise, it's going to look really, really bad. Okay. Add a sub event. We're going to go to system time. We're going to see if the world time now equals zero. Second thing is, I only want this to go off once, so press C for another condition. We're going to go to system, and we're going to go once. Trigger once while true. So that will make sure this doesn't happen infinitely, all the time. It's just going to happen a single time, because we want to go function, call function, dead. Okay. So with all that done, let's do a quick test, and the easiest way to test 
this code down here is going to be if we set the world time to something low, like 10. Okay, save and play. And play. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Dead. And there you go. Okay, so now with a little change of the Mario code, we have full support of him dying at the end of the level. And that's pretty much it for this video, everybody. That's actually going to bring us to the end. In the next video, we're going to start attacking the points around the world. So the points for the Goombas, the items, the coins, everything else, okay? Which is going to take us a little bit longer. So, thank you very much for watching, everybody. The like, subscribe, and comment sections are down the bottom because I'd love to hear from you. But for the moment, I will see you in the next video. We are coming to a close with this series, and I'm looking forward to getting to that flagpole at the end. So I'll see you then, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Ta-ta for now.